Okay, in this lecture we're going to talk about rounding functions. And I'm going to show you a number of different functions that can be used for rounding. And I'm going to show you one really important thing that rounding does to correct math errors in your Excel formulas that could otherwise potentially get you into a lot of trouble. So let's take a look at our example sheet here. So you'll see I have this broken down into five different rounding functions. We have the basic round function, we have round up, round down, ceiling, and floor. And round up and ceiling are very similar, and round down and floor are very similar, but I'm going to show you some subtle differences between them so that if you want to use it, you know how to use it. But let's start with the basics of the round function. And my favorite use for the round function is to keep you out of trouble with math errors in Excel. And the best way to show you this is just to dive right into an example of this. So let's say that we have two numbers here. So we have 2.9999 and 2.9999. So if we add these two cells together, and I'm just going to go ahead and use the auto sum, and you can either go click on the auto sum on the home tab, or you can just click alt plus, and it'll drop the auto sum formula right in there. You can see it's highlighted the two cells we're looking for. Click enter. It comes back with a result of 5.9998. But here's the problem. If we click on these two cells and we reduce the formatting to get rid of some decimal places, look what happens to those numbers. When you reduce decimal places, it automatically rounds it. So you can see that in the cell here, it's showing 3.00. But the actual number in this cell is still 2.9999. So when we add this cell plus this cell, the actual answer is 5.9998. So this is where the round function comes in handy. First we're going to delete this formula, and we're going to use our round function equals round, and then we'll tab, and we're going to say this cell plus this cell. So those are the numbers in our equation. Now you'll notice it's asking for the number of digits. So what it's asking is how many digits do we want it to round to. If we're working in dollars and cents, then we want to hit comma and we want to hit two because this is the number of digits after the decimal. And anytime you're working with dollars and cents, you need this to say two digits because you have your tenths place and your hundredths place for your cents. So you'll notice now if I click on this and I change the decimal places and add decimal places, it still comes out as 6.000 because I've rounded it to the two decimal place. But you'll notice if I go over here and I create an equation that says equals this plus this and hit enter, that it comes back as 599980 because it's taking 2.9999 plus 2.9999. Changing the formatting up here doesn't change the actual number that is the result. It only changes what's displayed in your cell. So you'll notice if I reduce the number of decimals on this, Excel automatically rounds it to the six, but the actual number in that cell is not actually six. When I get it out to the full number of decimal places, it shows the true number, which is 5.99980. So this rounding function actually brings us back a solid six it's still essentially six dollars. So when working with dollar amounts, using the round function can save you some serious critical math errors because where we're talking about a percentage of a cent here, if we were to take this amount and multiply it by a hundred, watch what would happen. Now we're off by two cents. Whereas if we take this amount and multiply it by a hundred, where we've rounded it, it's going to give us the correct answer. So six times a, six dollars times a hundred is six hundred dollars. And of course we'll change the decimals to make it match. But if without the rounding, we get errors in our math when it comes to dollars. So that's an example of how to use rounding to fix your math errors. Now let's look at another example where we're using a percentage, and this is basically the same issue. But we'll go with our equal sign and we say cell A3 times cell B3, which is 
and it comes up with 0.8671. Now again, if we change the decimals and reduce down the number of decimals to 2, notice that it rounded it up to 0.87, or 87 cents, because it's taking 0.8671 and it's rounding it to 0.87. So what we need to do to fix it again is to use the round function and say equals round and then we can take the product of $2.99 times 29%. Round it to two decimal places, hit enter, and it gives us the correct amount of 87 cents. And then one more thing I'll point out to you as far as the round function goes, you'll notice that I've been using the regular number, which is our math equation, and then the number of digits, and I've been putting two. Two is the number that you'll always use when you're using dollars and cents. But if I change this to zero, I could go with whole dollars. When I hit enter, rather than being 87 cents, it rounds it up to a dollar. So you can enter in whatever decimal place you want it to go to. If I want it to just go to the tens of cents, then I can hit the one, and it'll round it to 90 cents. And of course, I can make this look more like 90 cents by extending the decimal over, and then it looks like 90 cents. And it works better when you have larger numbers, but if I have, for instance, $245 and $565, but if I'm adding these two numbers, hit enter, then I get $810. But if I want to round this to the hundreds, then I can actually do a round function. And then I add the two numbers. And then I go to my number of digits, and if I say minus two and enter, then you'll see it rounds it to 800 because it's rounding it to two places to the left of the decimal. And again, if I undo that with just the regular math, you see that it comes out to 810. And if I redo it, with the rounding to minus two decimal places, you can see it rounds it to minus two. I could even, if I wanted to, round this to minus three, and you'll see that then it rounds it all the way up to a thousand, because it's rounding to the third place to the left of the decimal. So those are the two essential parts of the rounding function. You have your number, which in this case we are entering as a mathematical equation, but you could just be putting on a regular single number, and then the number of digits that you're rounding to, which is a positive number, a negative number, or zero. Okay, so let's get into the round up function. The difference between the round up and the round is that rounding will naturally round up or down according to the standard mathematical rules. So if we do a rounding function on this, and we round it to zero digits, you'll see that it naturally rounds that down. Let me copy that formula down, and you'll see that it naturally rounds this one up, because $2.15 is less than $2.49, and $2.75 is more than $2.50, and that's the normal rounding rules in math. So, watch what happens when we change these to round up. And I'll copy the formula, and now you see that it's taken the $2.15 and forced it to round up to $3. And of course, I'll change this formatting so it looks like dollar signs. And there we go. And round down does exactly the opposite. So we do our equals, round down, tab, take our number and our number of digits, we're going to zero, round it to the whole dollar, hit enter, and then if we copy it down, you'll see that it forced the rounding of both of these down to $2. Now let's take a look at what ceiling and floor are. Ceiling is basically the same as round up with one subtle difference. So let's do our ceiling on this. We hit tab, go to our cell, hit the comma, and you'll notice now, instead of saying number of digits, it's asking for the significance. And the significance is what number increment you want to round to. So if we want to round to the fives, we'll hit enter, and you'll see that it takes this $2.15 and it rounds it all the way up to five. Now we could change that to ones, 
and you'll see that it takes the two dollars and fifteen cents and rounds it up one dollar to three or we could change it to 0.5 and you'll see that it takes the $2.15 and rounds it up to 2.5. So that's really helpful if you need to do your rounding in increments other than whole numbers. And you'll notice if I copy this down, so where this rounds up to the half dollar, essentially, to the, to the 0.5, the 275 rounds up 0.5 as well to 3. And then the floor works in the same way that the ceiling does, but it's going to round down instead but using increments. So we go to floor, we hit tab, we choose our number, and then we pick our increments or our significance. Let's say we want to go to the $1 increments. Then you can see it rounds down to $2. And same with the 2.75, it's going to round down to $2. Let me reformat these so it doesn't bother me. There we go. And the ceiling and floor can be pretty much as extreme as you want them. So if I want the ceiling to go to the to the 20s, then it's going to round to the nearest $20 increment. Or if I want it to go to the nearest hundreds, then it's going to round to the nearest $100 increment. But more typically, you would probably be in the range of the single digits or the percentages of a number, like 50 cents. And I'll show you one more example of how the ceiling and floor could be effective. You could use round up and round down for this as well. But if we're doing, say, retail dollars, if these are wholesale prices in a retail store and you want to double the price and then change the ending to uh, 99 cents, for instance, then we would take equals ceiling. We would take our $2.15 times 2. We're going to round it to the whole dollar, close our brackets, and then we're going to add one more math equation and say minus 0 0.01, which is basically minus one cent. Copy this down for the number below. And so it's going to take our $2.75, multiply it times two, and give us $5.50. Then it's going to round it up and take one penny away. So that would be a really quick way to create a bunch of retail prices out of a huge list of wholesale prices. And I'll just let you take a look at that formula again. So it has our original number times two. The significance, it means the number that we're rounding to. So we're just rounding to one whole number and then we're subtracting one penny. And we could actually change this to 50 cents if we wanted to by adding 0.5 hit enter and then it would round it up to 549 and we could do the same thing with the one above. So that's how you can use five different rounding functions and also a couple of ways that you can use those functions to fix errors and also save a lot of time doing calculations. Hey there it's Steve here. Want to help me keep the lights on? Cue the lights. Ah oh, that's better. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you want to help me keep the lights on, will you please like this video, subscribe to my channel, or if you want to be a total rock star, click on the links in the description and you can join thousands of other students who have taken my Excel mastery courses and you can really take your skills to the next level and become an expert in Excel. Thanks so much for watching. Appreciate you helping me keep the lights on. Have a great one.